Thank you so much, family, for coming. For those of, the, of you that don't know me, I'm uh, Tim, the eldest of Tapua uh, E, Toese Asam, my mother, and Ha Marjorie Asam, and uh, six siblings, fought five siblings, excuse me, and I'm the eldest. You can tell that by my uh, receding hairline and gray beard that I'm quite the eldest brother of the bunch there, but praise God, I'm still here. Friends, family, your gift here today is your being here for Jeff. We can't thank you enough. You're here in honor of his memory. This is a great memory. You see the photographs and the pedestals of his pictures here. Family, it was his wish that you guys remembered him the way he was. He didn't want to be seen in a casket. He didn't want to be seen as a person that was broken down and hurting. He not be here physically, but he'd be here in our hearts. Thank you so much for honoring his memory by being here. About 45 years ago, 45, 46 years ago, while my mother was in uh, school in Walla Walla, Washington, she said, you know, son, I have to finish school, but I can't do it and take care of you guys. She was so, so unselfish. She sacrificed her being with her children, three of us, three young ones. And she says, I, I have to do this. And she said, I'm gonna pack you guys up and we have to head back down to California so I can finish my school up here. And I looked at her with a broken heart. I looked at her and I said, Mom, I can't, I can't. This is coming from a, a five-year-old, six-year-old. And she goes, why? I can't leave my friend Jeffrey. I can't leave my friend Jeffrey. And she looked at me and she goes, are you talking about Jeffrey Martin, your best friend? I said, yes. I can't leave him, he's my best friend. Fast forward, we moved from Washington, Walla Walla, we moved to LA, mom finished school. Fast forward to 1975. Mom comes from Samoa, she looks at me and she goes, son, I have a package for you. She walked in the door, she said, open your arms. Again, I was about 10 years old. I opened up my arms, she goes, here you go. She says, there's your Jeffrey. You wanted a brother named Jeffrey, and I loved him just as much as you have for almost 40 years. This meeting here tonight is for a cause for Jeffrey, and that's to bring somebody closer to our Lord and, Je our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen? Amen. Let's not let that go to waste. Support each other, love each other. Life on here is temporary. Heaven's forever, amen? Amen. So friends, family, we're gonna go ahead and start this meeting today with an opening hymn. An opening hymn that was a favorite of Jeff's. Face to face. Please stand. Let's sing this together.
everybody. Um, I was given this um, responsibility because I'm like the tough sister. So I'm gonna try and do this as best as I can. I don't think I have to stand up here and tell everybody the way Jeff lived his life. I think everybody knows Jeffrey in their own way, right? Amen. Yes. Um, Jeffrey, I'm the oldest of Jeffrey's sisters and um, he has always been a blessing to me. I know he was a brat sometimes, and I know I was mean to him sometimes, but I wasn't the meanest, so if you guys heard anything, it wasn't me. <laughs> um, and growing up, um, the times that Jeffrey would come to visit us, I do live in Oregon, he would always take over the kitchen, he would always make his usual <coughs> egg rolls and sweet and sour sauce, and we even got a chance to um, sample his uh, pineapple upside down cake. All the things that, that I remember of my brother, they're all positive. There were a lot of times I didn't talk to him very much. But when I would talk to him, he would listen. And all I would do is complain and complain. And he would always tell me to keep my head up and that he's not judging me. I, he knew that I was doing the best that I could for my family with what I had. Um, I love my brother, I miss my brother. I feel that he, um, waited for me because I was the last to get here um, during this last week. I'm glad that I did come. And with that being said, I appreciate everybody coming out here to show their, um, their love for my brother Jeff. Thank you very much. And everybody, love each other. Don't stop hugging. Tell everybody that you love them every day, okay? special person and he, and he was a blessing to me and I'm sure he was a blessing to all of us here um, and yes one of the challenges I got uh, from Jeff before he passed uh, is live our life serving God while we have the chance because sometimes it's too late when we're in the hospital and we don't have that second chance so while we're you know young or old while we're alive Let's use ourselves as God, God's instruments, and you know, uh, live life to serve Him. Uh, may God bless. Thank you. A young man who is special in our hearts. And when we came on this island, you know, we have a few me uh, members of our family. Here we have, I have uh, nephews and nieces on island, and they they are very uh, good young people. Uh, they've all been helpful and they've all blessed us in many different ways. But Jeffrey, I think uh, uh, Margaret has talked about him in, in a way that, because it's a special in a way because, uh, you know, he's a, just a different personality. Um, he's very low key and humble. And uh, the one thing I, I, I was really, uh, I, I really admired about this young man. You know, for, for someone uh, who is very intelligent, educated, smart, you know, he doesn't have that, he didn't have that um, arrogance about him. And, uh, you know, I, he's just special in my heart. Uh, he got through that. And, uh, above all, you know, I'm thankful because I know he's one young person that uh, loved this Lord. Right. And, uh, Gave his power to God. And you know, it's, it's my wish that my children uh, do the same thing. You know. Through his death, you know, uh, I just think that sometimes we accomplish things in our life, but then sometimes we don't accomplish enough for God. And uh, so sometimes in our death, hopefully we accomplish more for God's sake. And, and we really so uh, we thank uh, God for Jeffrey that was a blessing in our life. And uh, we want to sing a song that uh, hopefully will express our gratitude and our
think it was a couple of years ago, maybe three, I'm not quite sure, but um, I'm, I was taken back for a second there because I'm looking at my brother's pictures here, and um, if this was, you know, re, you know, back in that time period when I'm referring to, my brother was right in the fourth row, right there, videotaping our concert with our brothers over here. They're again ready to sing the Samoan Gospel Heralds. The group that I participate with are, again, family members uh, in the Northwest, and we are here doing uh, mission work, in, and uh, we're so blessed to be with them uh, during that time. And I'm just picturing my brother smiling with his camera, videotaping the program. Before they come up here, I just want to make sure I touch base with you guys regarding the next song they're going to be covering. It's about a song, it's a song called Home Where I Belong. Revelation 21, 3 and 4 says, And I heard a loud voice from the heavens saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death. It doesn't say here, might be. It says no more death. No sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed. I'm so looking forward to that day when we will have no more crying, no more sorrow, no more dying. At this time, I'm going to ask my brothers to come up. Psalm and Gospel Girls to sing Home Where We Belong.
Thank you, Psalm 1 Gospel Heralds. Thank you, brothers. What a wonderful message. I'm heading home. This time I'd like to introduce the speaker of the evening, Pastor Nelson. You know, Pastor Nelson, outwardly, he may be a Baalani, a man from the shady side of the island, but he's Samoan at heart. Amen. Pastor Walter Nelson, I learned some things about this man that just drove me to tears because we have so much in common. Not only is my father a retired minister, he's a dad, a pastor, a father. He has a son named Tim. That's his eldest son. He has another son named Jeff. I have a cousin named Jason. He has another son named Jason. Talk about coincidences. Pastor, thank you so much for taking the time and sacrificing to come this evening to give us a message, a message of hope, a message of deliverance from this world that we are in. And we're so looking forward to that day where we don't have to dwell on hope, but living hope. Amen? Church family, Pastor Walter Nelson. Thank you so much for that introduction. Where did you say I was from? <laughs> you said the Windward side. Is that what you said? <laughs> I'm not sure I got that. Anyway, Tim, I, um, I want to slap my son sometimes too for some of the things he says. <laughs> I see he snuck in, huh? I'm honored to be here today. I feel so unworthy to stand before you this afternoon. Who in the world in their right mind would want to have this responsibility with such an awesome family? It was so many years ago that when I got to know Pastor Assam that I, I saw the many gifts that God had given him and the things that he had accomplished. And I, I from that point on, stopped calling him Pastor Assam and started calling him Pastor Awesome. <laughs> he had an awesome family, he has an awesome family. And those of you who are here today are here because you have been touched by and blessed by that awesome family. Our presence here today is, is a testimony to not only that family, but especially to the one we have come to remember. The one we have come to say thank you, God, for the gift of his life. A gift that we enjoyed, oh, so shortly. A gift that was taken from us so prematurely. A gift that we covered the thought of having longer, but in his divine wisdom, he saw fit to allow us just a taste for now. We're here because that gift has touched us and blessed us in one way or another. And as I like to do at this moment in any service such as this, I think that it is fitting for us to thank God for the way in which he has blessed us by touching us with the life of Jeffrey, a song. And so I would like to invite each of you in your own way at this time to just bow your head and close your eyes and 
say thank you to the life giver for the gift of this one particular life today. Take a moment right now and, and do that, would you? We pause, Heavenly Father, before moving forward to recognize your presence in our midst right now. We have been blessed by testimonies of Jeffrey's life. We've been blessed by music that inspires us. That we are in the presence of an awesome family, but we are more importantly in the presence of an awesome God. A God who holds the keys to death and the grave. A God who has conquered death and the grave. And a God who says to us this afternoon, let not your heart be troubled. You will see your loved one again. And so Father, you who hold those keys in your hand, you who have lost a son to sin's curse, you who understood as you wept outside of his vision at the cross, you who understand every teardrop, Speak to our hearts right now. Speak to this mother and this father, to these siblings, to the cousins and to the relatives and to the friends. And give them, give them a renewed sense of that hope we call blessing. In the name of your son, amen. So Essay and Marjorie, Timothy and little Marjorie, Jacqueline and Geraldine and Jillian, you are a musical family. You are a family that sings, a family that speaks through music the hope of eternal life. And the words of a great hymn come to my mind as I stand before you today that I hope will bring you a sense of inspiration right now. It's, it's entitled, Until Then. And the words our hearts can sing when we pause to remember that a heartache here is but a stepping stone along the trail that's winding always upwards. And this, this troubled world, it's not our final home, amen? amen. But until then, our hearts can go on singing. Until then, with joy, let's carry on until the day our eyes behold the city. Until that day God calls us home, remembering that the things of earth will dim and lose their value when we recall they've been borrowed for a while. The things of earth that have caused our hearts to tremble, remember then will only, will only bring a smile. And so family, let your hearts keep on singing. Until then, with joy, carry on the ministry of encouraging people and giving their hearts and lives to Jesus. Until that day, know that Jeffrey is resting. Until that day, 
and God calls each of us home. I thought, Tim, you were going to preach my sermon for me. I don't know what you do for a living, but I can tell you're a preacher's son. And whatever you're doing, if it's not preaching, you've missed your calling. Now get an amen. amen. He actually was stealing my thunder with the words he was reading there. And I'm like, be quiet. I'm trying to, I'm trying to develop those thoughts. I direct your mind to the first verse of chapter 21 of the book of Revelation. I say I direct your mind. I redirect your mind. Tim has already brought you there. But that's all right. That's fitting. John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. We look around the world today and we see heartache and frustration. We see death and we see dying. We see earthquakes and we see misery. We see pain and we see ugliness. And I am here to tell you that that was not God's original plan for planet Earth. God intended a life full of happiness and joy, a life filled with singing and, and celebrating, a life full, a, a, a world full of foliage and, and richness and beauty. No vast ocean separating us from one another. No distance that we couldn't traverse with the speed of thought. God had a different world in mind. But then sin came along, and everything changed, didn't it? Animals started eating one another. People started eating animals. People started eating one another. And the image of God that we were made in, that, 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 that made us so much like Him and so noble, began to be eroded by time. And so God said, I gotta make a new heaven. I gotta make a new earth. For Jeffrey Hassan, 40 years was not God's original plan. For Jeffrey a song, even on this planet, I submit to you, that was not God's original plan. And as I stood by his bedside the other day and we prayed to, for him aloud, knowing that he could hear what we said even though he could not respond, I looked at his youthfulness and I thought to myself, this cannot be. And the last words, Marjorie, you remember we said to him was, Jeffrey, get out of that bed soon and darken the doorway of Central Church. I want to see you in church in a, in a Sabbath or two. Rotten, disobedient kid. Wait till I see him. I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to tell him, Jeffrey, I gave you an order. You know what he's going to say to me? God gave me a higher order. I can just see it. But this was not God's plan. In the future, God says mysteries that have disappointed us will be made plain. And then we will see how our seemingly disappointed hopes and unanswered prayers have been among our greatest blessings. I'm not sure what it was that made God change his plan. I am not sure what it was that caused God to say, Jeffrey, we want you now. But I am sure of one thing, that the ultimate desire in all of God's heart 
is for all of us to be in his kingdom. Amen. For all of us to come to know the original plan that God had for each and every one of us. For all of us to one day get there. And I do know this, family, friends, that if God let Jeffrey go to sleep, it's because he looked into the future and said, now is the best time for me to realize my new plan for him to be in my kingdom. Can you get behind that? You see, because God loves people more than anything, and more than anything, he wants us to know that he would rather die than to let us go. And so if God said, Jeffrey, sleep now, it's because he wants to wake him up in that first resurrection. Is that, is that all right? And we may not like it. It may not be a part of our plan. It may not be a part of our desire. It may not be a part of our wish. But I'm reminded of the words of Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord. Plans of peace and not of evil to give you hope and a future. And so my, my trust is in a God who loved him so much that he said, my best hope for your future, Jeffrey, is to let you sleep right now so that I can wake you in the morning. I can't help but love a God like that. I was sharing not long ago with a family who chose to go the cremation route. Many of us have decided it's the better way to go. When I was a child, I, I was so afraid of the flame that I said, I don't want that. And then I realized it's that or get eaten by worms if Jesus doesn't come. So in my pre-plan, I said, I'll take the flames, okay? <laughs> and so there is no briar here today, but I want you to know something, folks. One of my favorite psalms in all the scriptures and all the word of God is the 139th psalm. Because in that psalm, the Bible says, Jeffrey, a psalm, I was there when you were created in your mother's womb. And when you were be being formed in her womb, I was writing you down in my book. I went before you and I went behind you. I went above you and I went beneath you. I was there and I heard the words coming out of your mouth and I wrote every one of them down. You could take the wings of the morning, Jeff Jeffrey, a song, and you could dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. As a matter of fact, you were born and dwelt in the uttermost parts of the sea. Isn't that right? But even there, my eye shall see you, my right hand shall hold you. And then he says, I was there when you were curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, a euphemism for the womb. I was there, Jeffrey. And I wrote your parts in my book when as yet they had not been formed. Now some of your translations will say, I, I, I wrote all of your days. It sounds kind of Calvinistic to me, so I always revert back to the King James Version. I wrote your parts in my book when they were yet being formed. And I like that because it, 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 it associates with what Jesus said in Matthew 10 when he said, even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Not just counted. Why does God bother to write us in his book? 
to number the hairs of our head. I wasn't aware of why he would do that until I stood at the base of London Bridge in Lake Havasu City, Arizona. And as I stood at the base of that bridge one Sabbath afternoon, I looked at its beautiful arches, I looked at the stones of which it was composed, and I looked at every stone and noticed that it had a number on it and it was circled. And suddenly it began to come to me that God had a plan, that, 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 that the people who built that bridge had a plan for it when it was falling down in London. And they went to the people who were going to destroy London Bridge and they said, we want that bridge. And the people said, you've got to take it away from here. And they said, we will. Give us a minute. And they took out a piece of paper and they drew London Bridge and they drew every stone that was in London Bridge. And then they began to number those stones on their map, on their drawing. And then carefully they took those stones and they chipped away the crumbling mortar. And as they did so, they carefully took those stones and put them in crates and shipped them to Lake Havasu City, Arizona. And when they got there, they pulled out their map, their diagram of London Bridge. And they put every one of those stones back in the place that it was originally. The only difference today between London Bridge in London and London Bridge in Lake Havasu, Arizona is that London Bridge today is not falling apart. It has to do more to holding it together. A beautiful Tudor city has sprung up around it and people from everywhere come to see this icon of their childhood. Standing in all of its glory. And suddenly I realized why God bothers to number the hairs of our head. Because God has a plan for each of our lives that transcends the ugly of this crumbling world. God has a plan that transcends and he says, I saw a new city, I saw the new Jerusalem, I heard the great voice of God out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and he himself shall be with them, and he will be their God. Death can't raise its ugly hand against Jeffrey anymore. Even as I said that, something said to me, whoa, back up. Death could not raise its ugly hand against Jeffrey even before he went to sleep. Huh? You see, Jeffrey is not dead. He is sleeping. Amen? And Jesus has got his plan in his hand. He's got it all written down. Jeffrey, a song. Here are his molecules. Here are his parts. Here is all that belonged to him. And one day, he who spoke and it stood fast, he who commanded and the heavens were, he who spoke worlds into existence is going to speak. You know what he's going to say? Jeffrey, a song. Your father calls you. Amen? No, not that awesome man named Tuese. Your heavenly father calls you. Your earthly father will meet you in a moment. But right now, I want you to meet me in the air. Amen? Amen. And then God will wipe away all tears from their eyes. Because there will be no death, more death, Timothy. No more pain, no more crying, no more dying. For the former things are passed away. For behold, I make all things new. Now, 40 years was not the plan that God had for Jeffrey at home. But aren't you glad when Satan comes in and messes up God's original plan, he has another one? He's always got a backup. He's always got plan B. And plan B for Jeffrey was, I'll tell you what, Jeffrey, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to bring you back to this place, but I'm going to make it all brand new. 
just for you. And I have a vision of a day when we will see concerts in heaven. The awesome family will come together. Dad will be the MC of the program. Tim will try to horn in a little bit. Jerry Lynn will be on the piano if she's not on the organ. Somehow I think she'll be on some instrument that can do both at the same time. There will be Jacqueline getting the, the group all stirred up, because that's what Jacqueline does, am I right? Sorry. And Jalen, where are you, Jalen? Jalen. Jalen. Is that Jalen? Jalen, all you're going to be doing is making people pretty, because I don't know what your special gift was. The last time I saw you, you were that big. And then I looked at you and I'm like, what you do, girl? You are a woman. Watch out. Daddy, get the bat ready. <laughs> Jelaine will just be making the atmosphere nice to be around. And, and we will see an awesome family reunion concert. Mommy, you're going to be on the camera, right? She has her doctor degree in videotaping. She got, am I right? And Dad, I think Dad will be using the concert to build churches on other planets. Even if there's no one there yet to, have to be in those churches, he's planning for the future growth of the Alsan family. But I believe that the person that everyone will be excited to see there is Jeffrey. Jeffrey, who will be moving back and forth, shuttling people into the concert, making sure they have a place to sit. Am I correct? Somehow, I believe that's what he will be doing. Family. Once again, the psalmist said, like he wept at Lazarus' tomb. Just like he wept before he performed his greatest miracle. Not because he is helpless to do anything about this, but because he knew he could not tell those weeping ones what his plan was right then. But he gave us the story of Lazarus so that we can have hope that he is still on his throne that he's not falling asleep at the switch, that he knows what he's doing. And when it's all said and done, we're gonna praise him for what he has allowed. Amen? And so until then, may our hearts go on singing. Until then, with joy, let's carry on. Until that day, our eyes behold that city. And until that day, God calls us all to our hand. Father, let this family feel your arms around them, giving them strength and buoying their spirits today. Let them hear your voice speaking in their ears. Don't be afraid. I am with you. Don't be dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you. And I will help you. And I will uphold you with my strong love. May it be that you will keep that song in their heart, that hope in their minds until that day you call us 
into your heavenly presence. And we meet those we loved for a moment. And now we have them back forever. Until we trust you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, Pastor Nelson, for your comforting words, words that uh, will inspire us to go from this place to new people, bringing them closer to our Heavenly Father. Thank you so much. <laughs>